Yo, what's up, everyone? It's been a while since I've posted. Been a long journey. Um, I've updated most of you along the way um, through live streams and, and so on. Uh, basically, um, we have two fully disabled sons. Two of our five sons have a rare genetic muscle disease. And uh, periodically, you lose your nurses and so on. So, um, yeah, I've... Uh, I've adapted to being a nurse for the past several months, and that's happened. Uh, that's happened several times over the years, um, but there's there's only been like three or four times um, in more than a decade where it's been like for for months at a time. Uh, so yeah, I, I I sleep during the day and I take care of my kids at night. Um, anyway, it looks like the nursing situation is getting back to normal. Um, problem is I spent several months just sort of cleansing my mind of all the um, negativity over the years. Um, I just avoided all of that for a long time, have not been looking at comments. Uh, even when I would do a live stream uh, and I would have to criticize, you know, some position or something like that, I could tell I, I was kind of forcing myself because my like, like my heart wasn't in it, right? Like I'm not actually, I'm not actually angry. I encourage everyone to take a couple of months off from social media, uh, maybe once a year or something like that. Um, you, uh, you end up feeling way, 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 way better. Uh, anyway, so, but the situation's getting, getting back to normal and I understand, uh, hey, I get to get back to doing what I like, uh, making videos and so on. Um, but I did realize, and I, I think, I think we're alike in, in two ways. One, we both forget what we've learned if we're not using it. You like yeah, that? hundred percent. Yeah. I you, do that even with videos. Like I have a video I did like a month ago and I'll be like, Whoa, I forgot what I even wrote in there. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's even, I, I'll like, uh, I'll like read some quotation. I'll say, Oh, that's awesome. And then it'll turn out it's by me on yeah, someone yeah. else's page and so on. But yeah, I've, I've, I've always been like that. I've, uh, um, I took all the way through advanced German in college. I don't know any, I don't know German yeah. anymore. I can pick out words and so on. I could get the gist here and there, but I can't understand what people are saying, really. Yeah. Um, I took all the way through advanced classical Greek in graduate school. I can't remember classical Greek. I mean, I can open up a, a New Testament, which is biblical Greek, which is yeah. easier. And I can pick out, okay, that's chi, that's and. Yeah. I can pick out the words that you, you know, you went over like millions and millions of times. Yeah. Um, but I, I haven't really, studied anything having to do with Islam since last year. And uh, I noticed in just in conversations when it would come up or when I would go do a live stream, I'm like, I do not feel like back when I was debating Shabir Ali yeah. on this topic, right? Yeah. Like I'll, I'll, I'll remember kind of the, the gist of something, but it's not where I can be quoting sources yeah. and so on. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, it, so that's, that's one way we're kind of parallel. The other is, and you were just saying it, and I, I had just, you were telling me, and I had just said it to the apostate prophet, um, during his live stream in that I kind of respond to aggression. Yeah. You're like that, right? Yeah. I'm that way. Yep. It's a, if somebody like makes, like say they make a video that really gets on my nerves or something, or I read a comment where somebody's just like saying something ridiculous that brews life into me. That mm -hmm. just gives me energy. So when I was debating atheists all the time, and just like how you're saying, I forgot a lot of the stuff with a lot of the arguments and stuff too, because I haven't used it for a while. But when I was debating atheists and stuff a lot of the time, that would give me tons of energy for me to be, just do a whole bunch of videos going after their videos and all that kind of stuff. So I'm that and, and that's how, that's how I've been for basically since I've been a, a Christian yeah. is that if you leave me alone and don't bother me, yeah. I will sit on my bed and read. Yeah. And that's all that's that's what I want to do. Yeah. It's when you start messing with me or even worse, like messing with someone else or getting dirty, getting deceptive and so on. Yep. I just feel like this this energy coming up from yeah. inside me. So it's a situation where, man, I have no aggression in me right now. Yeah, yeah. I, how do I start making videos yeah. again? And, and so, I can tell. I can yeah. tell too. Yeah. Since we've seen each other the last couple of months, you've just been like way more mellow. You yeah. know what I mean? Way more yeah. mellow. And, and that, now I'm yeah. like the, when we're, when we're with the group, yeah. I'm normally the the biggest jerk. And yeah. now I'm like the softest, <laughs> most, <laughs> most mellow guy. Anyway, so we know a bit, we know a bit about of our, ourselves, but uh, I basically understand that I got to kind of jumpstart it. So yeah. I'm just going to go start 
you know, start some discussions with various people. Um, this week, I'm starting a discussion with uh, the Apostate Prophet. This is a debate on yeah. um, God and morality, but I know I'm going to get some feedback from atheists. We went and talked to uh, Hebrew, Black Hebrew Israelites. Yeah. Um, they started saying some really, really nasty stuff. And uh, two weeks ago, and then today, since there was uh, an open invitation to come have a discussion with um, Sheikh Uthman here in San Diego, that's where we are right now. I decided to go uh, go down go down there, and it is uh, it is interesting how I, I don't recall the references anymore. Yeah. and it's it's similar to like a language, and it's like Thai. And yeah. uh, if it's something I've used a million times, like sort of nine twenty nine or something yeah, like yeah. that, I remember that. But I remember I used to I, you know, I used to know yeah. the commentaries on all this stuff. Anyway, there is this uh, there is this issue, in that if if I kind of just jump in there, yeah. And I told you to jump in there too, right? Yeah. Because I said because he was having a hard no, time. No, I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't mean jump in there and be yeah. aggressive. Oh, I mean, yeah, if no, I just yeah. jump into a discussion, exactly. that's what if I, mean. I just jump yeah. into a discussion. Yeah. Um, there is short-term thinking and long-term thinking here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, if if I just jump in there, then obviously, if hey, if I went and studied for three months and got back, and then things things would go uh, uh, much better. But I'm also thinking, hey, if you're going to be coming out there every week for years and i have tons of opportunities for discussion so this is where the the disagreement comes in because two weeks ago i was the nicest i've ever been in my entire life yeah, yeah. and everyone david why are you so weak yeah. why are you so weak well i'm thinking for hey i mean i want to try to get along at the beginning i understand guys i'm not saying uh, uh always be like this there are situations where you just want to go in there uh blasting um my view is if this is a if this is a one-time thing this is the only time you're yeah. going to see him then yeah, you need to make sure um, you are totally prepared, you're ready for it. Yeah. If you tell me that you're gonna be somewhere every week for the foreseeable future, then uh, yeah, I can, I can jump in there. And uh, it's kind of fun, but he did everything you said he yeah. would do. Because yeah. I've, I've only, I'd only seen one video of his. Yeah. I saw his uh, debate challenge to Christian Prince. So I haven't gotten like a read on him. Yeah, we yeah. got to see some of it last time, two weeks yeah. ago, got to see some of his, where yeah. most of the time I was just sitting there listening, but got to see some of the, some of the tactics he used. And so the question was, what, what other tactics would he use this time? Yeah. And you, you kind of yeah. you knew where, where he would go, because they're pretty common. Yeah. Yeah, no, I saw him um, even last time how he did uh, when I, I just watched the discussion even with Anthony because I recorded some of it and then a lot of it I didn't see. But I knew how he was going to do. Um, and he's good at this, too, because he's used to talking to people. He's good at trying to keep people on their back foot and he's good at trying to control the conversation. Mm -hmm. He's good at using the sly sneak disses and the rhetoric and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Act like he's the nice guy and, you know, be like, oh, yeah. And then try to throw these little disses out there. I knew he was going to do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I told um, David, too, I said, if he's going to get you on the back Back, on your back foot he's gonna be nice and he's gonna try to embarrass you it's just what he's gonna do and David is telling me he's like he just wants to have a conversation you know he's not trying to go full-fledged into debate mode and stuff and I said if you do he's gonna just take that and just try to use it against you you know what I mean and try to make you look dumb and then try to you know ask you something about the Arabic or something that that you, you know, that you don't know and then say ha ah, you don't know what you're talking about I knew that's how he was gonna do so I told David not to start off being nice and stuff and trying to do all that I said <laughs> Go there. I can't you know? help it right now, man. Yeah, I mean, David's just it's like, like it's like I need a bunch of uh, interactions and then a bunch of mean, nasty comments and so on to get myself kind of go. It's like it's yeah. like a fighter, right? If you yeah. got a boxer who hasn't boxed in a while, yeah. you just kind of look. You got to jump in there and start and, yep. and, uh, and start swinging and taking taking some hits. And I disagreed with him, but he decided to take his approach, and so I said, "All right, you want to get, you know." Yeah, it's ring? it's. I mean, no, I I agree. With, I, again, I agree, I agree yeah. with you long yeah, yeah. term. It's just uh, you, yeah. you, 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 we were talking to Muslims afterwards. We yeah. were talking to Muslims afterwards, having yeah. a discussion. There are a lot of there are a lot of cool Muslims there, and so, yeah. guys, keep in mind, I'm not the, you know, there are Christians who say you shouldn't ever have hostile interactions or right. be aggressive and so on. I'm not. I'm not that. It's just. I mean, I'm thinking more along the lines of. Like Nabil, if I had met Nabil and just come out guns blazing at Nabil, yeah, 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 yeah. we wouldn't have become friends. Yeah. We wouldn't have gotten along, and so yeah. on. And so I'm out there, and I'm out there, in a, and I've had several yeah. Muslim friends over the years. Yeah. Um, several of them have left Islam, yeah. and so I don't know out there who I could get along with and be friends with. Yeah, I don't yeah. know enough about Sheikh Uthman. I kind of like it. I mean, yeah. we're learning his tactics and yeah. so on, but uh, yeah. um, I respect people who stand out yeah. there and uh, put their views. Um, Put their views out there and so on, and are willing to um, to accept all challenges and so. But yeah, it's um, 
this discussion that we had. So the the idea was last time we were there, we took some tracks. We took yeah. some, I took some tracks. And uh, so today I was coming back to ask some questions about the tracks. Yeah. We only got through one of them. But uh, we, yeah. knew, we knew he was going to try to divert. You said it ahead of time. He's going to try to divert before we ever got to the track. And I don't know how long. We'll have to take a look at the footage. But yeah. it was like... Uh, what an hour or something like that yeah. on side issues and yeah. what about this and let me clarify this and yeah. uh, do you condemn Sam Shamoon? Yeah, 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 and that's and, and so that's a good rhetorical strategy that he has yeah. um, because he tries no, to it's keep popular. It, yeah, exactly, it's popular. And so he's going to try to take control, trying to say, "Hey, do you condemn Sam and um, do you approve of this?" Because he's trying to cause the division mm -hmm. between everybody. You know? Yeah, and then the video, the videos will be David Wood slams yeah. Sam Shamoon <laughs> yeah. and so on. Yeah, and so that, that's yeah. why they love to do that. They, they, yeah. What they don't realize is, I mean, our guys don't seem to care. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We all make fun of each other all the time anyway. As, uh, yeah. As, yeah, what we say behind the scenes is yeah. way, way more brutal. So, <laughs> so I mean, I just said, yeah, I think Sam is legitimately uh, mentally messed up <laughs> like I am. Aha! <laughs> you admit He's this like, say it for the camera. <laughs> say it for the camera. And yeah. I, I'm saying, Sam will tell you that. We've said that in tons of live streams that yeah. uh, we believe we are misfits we have i mean i've actually been in mental hospitals yeah. right so we, we understand we've got issues to work through we understand yeah. all of it we understand all of that um and, and we value honesty yeah right yeah yeah we and, could go up there and just deny it you know we don't really care if people use those things against those yeah know? and it, it's yeah. funny because then what i mean i saw you was doing that and i'm like well let, let me let me let me just do it in reverse. So I said, yeah. it's like Muhammad Hijab. Right. I don't know if they'll post this, yeah. but uh, it's like Muhammad Hijab. Muhammad Hijab, um, he believes that if you criticize his religion, he's justified in you know going after your wife or any of these like other Muhammad. things. Like yeah. Muhammad. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's that sort of, sort of situation where I didn't want to, because you wanted me to keep going with that, right? You yeah. wanted me to just keep blasting all of these guys, and yeah. I could have, and in the future, I or pressing I might, him on it because yeah. he, he's trying to get you to say you disagree with Sam, and then you can ask him if he disagrees mm. with a job, you know? Yeah, and and so it's, it's a situation where um, I kind of just wanted to him to know we can do this too. I don't want to. Yeah. I yeah. don't want to. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to walk in there and go, look what Muhammad Hijab said here. Do yeah. you condemn him? Yeah. I don't yeah. like, what, what are you, yeah. what are you doing there? Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that, I find that absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so that took entirely too long. They get the kind of clips uh, they want. They get the kind of clips that our side doesn't seem to care much about. I don't think Sam will really care. Again, we're, 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 we're way more vocal uh, yeah. behind the scenes, but, uh, Right now, Sam probably thinks I'm the biggest sissy in the world, <laughs> right? And uh, so, yeah, anyway, that, that, so that was going on. And, but eventually, eventually we got to the discussion that I wanted to have, which was just, it's funny because I was going to go through all these tracks and then we spent the entire rest of the time up until he had to go talking about one track. Yeah. And it's just a couple of passages and something I thought would take like 10 minutes yeah. to go through this one track. And then we go on to the next one and it took the entire time. And so uh, it's basically, it was actually very interesting. And I started off uh, really nice. I, I started sort of sparking up by the end. It yeah. actually felt, it actually felt good. Back in your I started orbit, feeling yeah. like, like the dizzle and yeah. not like a super nice reading all not day. Not like David. David. <laughs> yeah. yeah. David, I need to come up with names yeah, for the, uh, for the alter egos here. But um, yeah, so it just started. I'm asking some simple questions and then yeah. stuff that I thought, you know, should take one minute uh, turned out much much longer but it was cool because by the end by the end this was my impression i'll have to go back and look at the footage but we're about to post the footage um by the time you get to the end i mean he's throwing his own scholars under the bus oh, yeah. and it's not i'm saying hey here's what the verse says it really sounds like this yeah um you're saying no 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 you have to do all this research to figure out what it means which doesn't seem like it's all that clear um and then when i quote ibn kathir court to be, and they're quoting other Muslim scholars, you, he throws them all under the bus and says, no, you have to go to a modern Muslim scholar. Yeah. And this is just, this is, this is really where we got to at the end that this is really messed up. Yeah. That if Islam is supposed to be the religion for all people and you can read the book and you're not going to get it, you're going to be wrong. And you can go to their greatest, most respected commentators of all time, and you're still not going to understand it. And you basically have to go to Sheikh Uthman or some scholar that's that's uh, approved in some way, 
And that's where you have to go for information. And so it's, it's like I have to have a lot of confidence in that person, right? Yeah, I have to yeah. say, I have to say, wait a minute, I can't learn this for myself. Yeah. I have to put all my trust in you yeah, yeah. to tell me the truth about these things. Why should I believe you? Why should I trust you? And Because we're not like that, right? Yeah, yeah. I want to I know what the documents say. I want to know yeah. what your sources say. Yeah. And I, then I want to see if you're lining up with your sources yeah. and if you're not. And that, that's something interesting that was happening. He was acting like the Quran is so clear that once you know the background, then everything falls into place right. for the scholars. And yeah. so I quoted, but it, this was towards the end. It took a long time. To, it basically took a long time of him talking for me to actually get to where I wanted to go that I thought it would take 10 minutes to get there, but it yeah. took a lot longer to get there. Yeah. We actually got to the point where he's saying, no, all the scholars and so on, they all agree on this stuff. Um, and I point, and so I start quoting the sources and they're talking about scholars and yeah. scholars are giving a bunch of different positions and none of them agree with his position. Yeah. And that's when he had to throw all of them out and no, you have to go to a living scholar. Yeah, yeah. You can't go to all these, uh, all these uh, classic, Muslim, classic Muslim scholars. Yeah. And notice that the reason was that once you go to the classic Muslim scholars, the classic Muslim scholars agree with me. Yeah. That yeah. these things are hopelessly confusing and that these things aren't condemning violence in the way they're saying. Holes in the narrative. Yeah, and so you can't go to them because they're agreeing with me. And so I have to go to a modern guy yeah. who's not going to agree, who's not going to actually correctly represent the sources, and is going to be totally out of line with classical yeah. scholars. And I have to listen to a guy and just trust anything he believes. Yeah. And that was kind of uh, the problem. Again, it took a while to get there, but uh, again, it's only my first full discussion back. I said yeah. a few things two weeks ago, but uh, yeah. first full discussion back. You'll and back. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think next time it will. I'll be uh, I'll be a little better off because yeah. uh, I'll have a little bit more more aggression. As long as I toughen you up. Yeah. 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 Well, you <laughs> should start, you should start jumping in there with some some stuff. Yeah. 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 I wanted to. I just was filming, so I didn't want to. Take over That's how I feel when I have a camera. I'm like, yeah. I, like when we're with the Hebrew Israelites, I yeah. normally keep my I normally keep my mouth shut. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, you should jump in there. And uh, again, you, I want to spot the possible Nabils or, or the possible friends. Now, they don't have to yeah. be converts and so on, but yeah. it's basically if I can get along with you, I want to get along with yeah. you and we can still have discussions. Yeah. We're not going to we're not going to, you know. We're not going to avoid issues because we don't want to offend each other. Yeah. But I believe that long term, I mean, I didn't come out blasting Nabil with, you know, Aisha and stuff like that. Oh, right, right. I got to the point where I was blasting him with Aisha and the sex with captives and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the time we got to that, we liked each other. Yeah, we perfect. were friends, yeah. right? Um, we got along. And so we understood, hey, I've got your best interest in mind. You've got my best interest in mind. Right. So when I bring this up, it's not because I hate you. It's because I think you need to know this and need to be able to account for this. And so it's, uh, guys, I'm all for. I'm all for being aggressive. I'm all for just crushing your opponents in certain situations. Me, especially at this juncture in my life where I'm not. His I don't age. I, he's softening up at his old age. I don't think. I think it's just cl my, like <laughs> being totally cleared out of all yeah. negativity. No, that like, is there's true. no negativity, yeah. man. Yeah. I spend every night with my, with my yeah. disabled kids yeah. in the room with them. And then... You know, for when I when I wake up, I go to the gym and I've been working out. Yeah. I'm I'm down about sixty pounds now. Shredded. Yeah. yeah, and I'm going I'm going further and so on. So it's just been this yeah. total like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You feel totally different yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, mentally and physically. Yeah. And so this is like the best I've felt in my life. Yeah. I've yeah, never yeah. I've never felt this yeah. good right now. Yeah. And so I'm walking around all day thinking about how good I feel. Yeah. Um, but I understand. It's not really me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm an I, I'm an aggressive dude, and so yeah. and I that's I do like doing that when I'm doing it. It's just when you step away from a while, you get yeah. used to doing other things. But yeah, so I'm gonna jump back into it, and uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, uh, all right, we're ready to uh, post footage. Yeah. All right. So um, there's the other introductory stuff. I'll probably only post it if they like mess around and and mis edit it and so on. Because you can you can cut things out and so on. Um, but basically I don't care what they do with that footage and as long as they don't misrepresent things. Um, I want to post the discussion about the tract. And if you've got some time, go ahead and watch, watch that till the end and watch, um, by the time he has to leave, by the time yeah. he has to leave, uh, I think that was where he was kind of in trouble. 
yeah, you stop making sense to me at least. My perception, I can only go off my perception, but I even asked him a few questions about what he meant by clarity because it just didn't seem to make a whole lot of sense to me. Yeah. And uh, he, David was going down that same path and then he was just kind of wrapping it up. Not to say that he was trying to run or anything like that. I don't know his intentions yeah. there, but he was in trouble, I think, at that point. Yeah, and uh, and so it, it is interesting because we, we're pointing out, hey, the Quran claims to be clear. It is. It's so clear yeah. once you know the background. Yeah. Well, why do your scholars have these yeah. disagreements? Who aren't clear. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't listen to those scholars. Just listen to a modern scholar. Yeah. And, come yeah. on. We all know that modern scholars are not going to agree on these, uh, yeah. these issues. Uh, but anyway, here's uh, here's that discussion. I do not know how long it is, but uh, we've got the footage loading. So talk to y'all soon. Dizzle's back. It's gonna take it's gonna take uh, take a few weeks to get some momentum going, but I'm gonna pick some uh, some I'm gonna pick some small calm fights with a bunch of different groups, and I'll be back pretty soon. In lines, then. All right, you know. Basically, grew up in a West Virginia trailer park. You know what I'm saying? Are you recording? Yep. You getting this? Yep. You see a red dot? Yep. So, there's one thing that concerns me in life. Basically, I grew up in a West Virginia trailer park. Drugs everywhere, violence everywhere. End up in prison, end up in mental hospitals. Become a Christian, get out, move to the Bronx live all these years in the Bronx and all kinds of stuff happens. And the result is that it kind of makes you invincible. Like what, you know, what, what can anyone do to me? Right. But the one thing that concerns me is that all these years, what if in the future, at some point I get popular, so popular that I start worrying about what happens. You know what I mean? Do you, do you ever get that concern? Like, yeah, you bit. see, you've been poor, we've been poor, yeah. and you know, we had no place to go but up. What happens if we're not poor and everything is going well? Do we then get soft? You know what I mean? Yeah. Do we get soft when, yeah. when we have a lot to lose? Yeah. It's, easy, it's easy to be tough when you got nothing to lose, but what happens when you got a ton of stuff to lose, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what concerns me. So anyway, bottom line is, some days you just gotta roll up on the Dawa booths and give everyone an opportunity to saw your head off if they want to. So these guys seem pretty nice. They're not gonna saw anyone's head off, but other people hanging around might want to, no? I mean, we are showing up with two of the main cast members from Islamicize Me, so we're gonna see what happens. Now let's go find Sheikh Uthman. Huh? So that's hey! Crazy, 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 crazy. Oh, how you doing, man? How you doing, man? Where are your buddies today? Which one? <laughs> oh, those bunch of came. lazy bums. <laughs> Can't get them out. See, I, I actually like to travel, so I like, nice. I like jumping up. I'll even tell you the situation here. So I took some of your tracks last time. Nice. I don't even see them. Uh, so I took some of your tracks last time. Nice. I read four or five of them. Nice. And I was, uh, I was about to make, not quite, <laughs> not quite, but, but you never know what might happen. You never know. But I was about to start making a video, right, right. a video response. Like, hey, I think this is really, really wrong. Okay. So I'm going to start making a, a video response. Right. And I'm like, what the heck? There's a shake on call. I can go run it Come by the shake. There you go. If he can get, you know, if he responds to it, then yeah, maybe, you know, I don't want to make an idiot out of myself. There you go. But if you can't respond, if you can't respond to it, then, you know, then maybe I know I got somebody else can, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I read these four. That's good. A lot of guys do them. The one I wanted to make a video about it was in here. And then I thought, well, I'd ask you, uh, I'd ask you a bit. All right. But I think I, I think I had a couple more objections about this one. No, we'll, 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 we'll go right. through them. They shouldn't take two. They shouldn't take, take terribly go for long. It. Go for it. All right, so this is mis this is misconceptions about Islam. And so one of the and some of these are just clarification, like what exactly do you mean by this? Because it seems Hit like me, bro, a go ahead, man. Don't be shy. So, I got you. Uh, um, misconception number one is Muslims do not share good and noble values with non Muslims. And it says, some people allege that Islamic values are somehow incompatible with decent Western values, such claims cannot be further from the truth. 
And then... Wait, I'm sorry, so, okay, can I read that? Because that, that doesn't sound like it. Such claims could not be further from the truth. Okay, can I take it? Oh, okay, so this is a misconception. This yeah, is not a statement. That. Okay, I'm sorry, because it seems like yeah. saying Muslims do not share good values yeah, this is, is a statement. this is misconception okay, number so one. Let me, let me just clarify this for the camera. Well, we, we're reading it together, okay. right? So this is a misconception that is not true, that some people, maybe Islamophobes or those that have mm -hmm. some kind of hatred, say that Muslims do not share good and noble values with non-Muslims. That is not true, right? Some people allege that Islamic values are somehow incompatible with decent Western values, right? Yeah. Such claims could not be further from the truth. Muslims cherish noble and universal values such as being honest and just, such as keeping one's word, allowing freedom of religion, respecting parents, relatives, neighbors, and the elderly, being charitable, generous, and looking after the poor and needy, not lying, cheating, swearing, or backbiting anyone. Muslims are required to contribute positively towards society and to always conduct themselves in the highest moral and best action. All right. All right. Thank so the, you for the, the, the point of confusion here was Muslims cherish noble and universal values sure. such as, and then it says allowing freedom of religion. Sure. So this is at any sort of Westerner who reads that would okay. think that Islam has freedom of religion as a universal value. So then, noble and universal values such as What's your freedom of religion. Well, I'm thinking of uh, things like uh, uh, death penalty for apostasy. So sure. you leave Islam, you convert sure. to something else, um, and you get put to death. So sure. I'm saying when, when someone who's walking by here and takes your track, mm -hmm. takes a look at that. Takes my trap? Take Come track. On, we call these tracks. Tracks? These are called tracks. What's the track? T R A C T tracks. Oh, tracks. That's what okay. they're called. That's cool. we, we, we normally think of, I mean, as far as Christians handing them out, we normally think of pamphlets as something thicker, and then uh, tracks as like a one, like a one full. We just think of sharing and values. But okay, okay. So, yeah. so, so, go ahead. So, so, let me explain something to you. Okay. When you talk about first thing, the idea of religious freedom. Okay. okay? Um, in the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, peace and blessings be upon him, were there Christians and Jews that lived in Medina, lived under the Khilafah, and were able to? Pray, have churches and things, or no? Um, yeah, they ultimately became dhimmis. But I'm, I'm more, sure, I'm more thinking of, I, you know, we, we understand, we understand the dhimmi status and the jizya and so on. I'm more thinking of sure. polytheists because or atheists so, so me, because anyone here who hears sure, universal value, sure. freedom of religion, sure. would think that there is no death penalty for leaving so, Islam or something so, like that. So, so me, that's what I'm wondering. Let me let me clarify for you. I got you, David. So first thing to understand when you talk about the universal freedom of religion. We need to understand what that encompasses, right? So, for example, when you had the Spanish Inquisition, right? You mm -hmm. know about the Spanish Inquisition? Yeah. Okay. So when the Spaniards came, they didn't allow people to stay Muslim, right? It was either you convert or die, right? Yeah. Um, Come on, David. Don't yeah. try to deny it. You're on tape, bro. Some cases, no. We, we, Spanish Inquisition. We condemn, do. we condemn violence, but the gotcha. point is, it's not. It's not part of the religion. That's what. That's what I, people do. I agree with which you. Which is exactly what I'm, I'm sure you say about certain people. I would. But, I would. But the Spanish Inquisition is an example of not allowing the people to practice their religion. True. Either happens. you become Christian or yeah. die. So I wouldn't call that freedom of religion. Agreed. True. Right? In Islam, we don't have that. If you, even if you are a dhimmi or whatever, you have the right to keep to your religion. Nobody's going to force you to become Muslim. Is that right? Um, yeah, it is. So no, I don't think so. Okay. So why not? Well, okay, if, if, if you're in a Muslim country and you convert, so, so hold on, we're first talking about people following. Are you free to convert? Are you free to leave Islam? Sure, let me, let me get to that. Let me, let me get to that. Take I'm that, all of you people who say that you should be killed. I, got uh, I don't know who those people are, but okay. I mean, you got right. Ali so, Dawa. Ali Dawa says Ali that if Dawa you leave and you're, you, you know, you're, you're spreading your, uh, you're so, spreading your so, so, uh, unbelief, I, then you got to be put to I, death. I, in I got you. I, I, let, let me first explain this, okay? So, first thing is, here in America, right? Mm -hmm. let me, because you're talking about Islamic values. Mm -hmm. right? You're not talking about the Khilafah and Bay'ah, because those are things that you're trying to skip out on, which I'm going to make clear, okay? Hold on, hold on, I got you. No, I'm saying, I, I understand it here. I understand okay. it here. No, no, but no, no. you so, said so universal. You're, you're talking about Islam, mm -hmm. right? So in Islam, if somebody here, as a Muslim, I'm here, somebody comes, takes a book, becomes a Muslim, mm -hmm. right? And then he leaves his religion. Mm -hmm. Am I to kill him? No. Why not? The freedom of religion. Right? But as a Muslim, is it an obligation upon me to kill that person? It's not. 
and no scholar said that you can, right? right? So this is where you have to be clear, right? Yeah. Now, we we'll take the track isn't clear. Okay, well, I'm making it okay. clear for you. I, I think it is clear, but if you're not clear, I'll make it if clear. If you say for you. universal, that would mean everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, okay. so, now we believe that people have the right to practice their religion universally, under Islamic Khilafah, not under Khilafah, everywhere. Polytheists? Right? Polytheists, sure. There were polytheists in the Prophet in Mecca. You didn't know that? Yeah, until until what? Didn't it, didn't they reveal some verses about you? You got a couple months to get out or get out of or what? else. The opening verses of uh, of certain Toba. Toba is about a particular battle. You know that, right? Yeah, but so, I mean, we, we could we oh, could you, we could read. You, you you're, you're saying that's a particular battle. That, that polytheists continue to a... exist in Mecca even after even in the time of the of the Khulafa. I'd be interested. Oh, I'd be interested in, a, David, in reading your sources. David, reading your sources David. on that. You need to get educated, we can, son. We can, we, can, we, can, we, can read, <laughs> right. we can read some of this. I'll tell you what. I have a series on YouTube about the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him, mm -hmm. from authentic sources. Okay. Why don't you go home, check the Majid Ribad channel, mm -hmm. and watch it. Right? There were polytheists that were there under the Islamic Khilafah all the way through Abbasiyah and Amawiyah. This is historic facts. Have you have you read Tabari and Ibn Kathir Bidai wa Nihaya? On, uh, on apparently not. On Surah Nine, yeah. <laughs> Surah Tauba is yeah. about what? It's about a bunch of things. Okay, but what's the Asbab al Nuzul? Um, I mean, at first you have. Uh, Do you know what Asbab al Nuzul long, means? Long. What, what does Asbab al Nuzul mean? That's uh, the situation of Revelation or something. It's context. Like that. Yeah, context right. of so Surah Tauba is in the context of the Battle of Ahzab. Okay. You know that, right? Um, you didn't know that. It's okay. We're here to learn. So, when you look at an ayah, you have to look at the context of that verse. Okay? Where, where is it applicable in a time of peace or war? Is it about a particular situation, a particular mm -hmm. people? Or is it am? You know what am and khas mean? No. All right. I'm, I'm here to help you, Dave. I got you. Um, so it sounds. It kind. It kind of seems like you're deflecting. I'm really not. Because it's I'm a very trying, simple thing. Yeah. Are you ask about? Are Muslims Tawbah? allowed to leave Islam in a sure, Muslim I'm, state? I'm, I'm, I'll answer that. But first, I want you. Because that's my really only objection because, to that part. Because your question that came up from you mm -hmm. was about Surah Tawbah. So I'm just trying to explain to you, so you don't go the rest of your life with this misconception, making videos without being ignorant of what Am and Khas is, right? There are certain verses that are for certain situations. You need to learn that before you make videos. And certain that are general. The particular is called khas. Some are about jihad, about the time of fighting. Some are about the Quraysh who were oppressing Muslims at that time. But they're not generally taken about all non-Muslims in all different areas. So you need to learn that so that you don't misunderstand the Quran. Now, let's get back to your question. Your education will have to wait. All right. So, now, when you talk about the hukum of murtad, the murtad, mm -hmm. right? First thing which you're missing is this is not generally for somebody who leaves Islam. This is for somebody who's under the Khilafah, right? Like in Pakistan, for example, today. That. Okay, so you know that. So why, why well, are you not, confused well, then? <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't. So, I wouldn't say under the under the Khilafah, but I, I see that it wouldn't apply over here. In a way no, no. So okay. so let's take it at Pakistan, for example, or Malaysia, mm -hmm. right? Those are Muslim countries. People that become Christian are not put to death. You know that, right? Um, yeah, we're talking about Islam here. We are talking about Islam, so we're talking about so. So when you talked about Islam, you said Muslim countries. When I talk about Muslim I'm countries, you talk about Islam. It's, 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 right. it's very so, simple. It's very simple. If anyone leaves the, his religion, kill him. But that and is I'm saying that is do you under, kill someone for that is under al bayah when you have pledged and there is a court system and a khilafah because that comes under treason. So if you have a caliphate, yes, you have a caliphate, yes, and someone is in the Muslim community who gives allegiance. Okay. Right? So a Muslim. Let's say so so well, you're you're, so, you're you're a Muslim and sure. then later on and then let's you say, change your mind sure. and you decide to become a pagan. Sure. So here does it does it apply there? Sure. So let me death penalty? Let me let me clarify okay. for you, bro. So when you are under a khilafah mm -hmm. and you give bayah, you have pledged an allegiance to the khilafah, right? Mm -hmm. At that time then you become a murtad, meaning you leave Islam. But you don't tell anybody. This is between you. You just sit there and worship your own whatever at home. Nobody's going to kill you. Understand? But if you go out now under an Islamic Khilafah, you give the allegiance and you start preaching towards other religions, right? A paganism, whatever. Deep religions who the Khilafah may be at battle with. 
then this is taken as treason. And you know in America also treason can have the death penalty, right? Here, you will not just be put to death. You will not, is this, this is where your misunderstanding happens, right? No, I know the, there, there, there are waiting periods and stuff depending yeah, on so which first, school. First, they will on. speak to you, right? They will talk to you like, hey, <coughs> why are you trying to cause fitna? You know what fitna is? Yeah. Tribulations mm -hmm. in the land. If you didn't want to be Muslim, that's you. But now you're trying to cause a problem within the Khilaf, right? Just like in America, let's say you, tomorrow David Wood gives uh, allegiance to Daesh, ISIS, mm -hmm. right? You you give, now, now FBI is going to come talk to you, bro, what are you doing, mm -hmm. right? And you start posting about them and you start supporting them. Now you're going against the government. Now you'll be arrested. You could get the death penalty, you could be arrested, you could be sent to Gitmo, whatever else would happen. That is how the Irtaz laws work under that circumstances. But, like I said, if you're a Christian and you're living in the Muslim land, you have the universal right to practice your religion as Islam has protected. And, and a, a polytheist as well. Sure. And, and like I just, I just told you that right now, you have so many Hindus living in Pakistan, uh -huh. living in Malaysia, even in Saudi, right? Even in the, in the Middle East, you know that, right? Nobody yeah. kills them, nobody's stopping them from... In, 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 in Dubai, now they got Hindu temples and stuff, so you know all this. You're just, I don't know, maybe you're just trying no, to... No, 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 I don't... <laughs> I distinguish between the religion and what people do. Right? Okay, so in so, the religion so when, of Islam, when, when, when a Muslim does something sure. and I can't think of, hey, in what, the where's religion that coming of Islam, from? I don't blame Islam. Those me. people that were Hindu, when the Muslims conquered and ruled India, they did not convert them. The majority of India stayed Hindu. They were not killed, they were not converted, they were given the right to practice their religion. And that is what Islam teaches us. We cannot force anybody to become Muslim, and we don't tell anybody, hey, either if you're Hindu, either become Muslim or you die. No Muslim agrees with that. Oh, actually, there's a there's a point on that right here that we'll get to. I had a, I had a question about that one as well. So, when you say universal freedom of religion, that wouldn't include the right to leave Islam under a caliphate and then to go out preaching your religion, even if your religion calls you to, so, let's so, say, share so, the gospel or so something. That, that would not be religious freedom. That would be considered causing a fitna, a tribulation within the Khilafah. And that would be tried under treason. But you could, I mean, you could say that about anything. I mean, you could have an American ruler who jumps up and decides, hey, you know, spreading Islam, that's Fitness. treason. Yeah. And I wouldn't call that freedom of religion. Take it up with that American so, leader, but, but let, let me, so let me explain some qualifications so, here. So, so let me explain. That's all I'm saying. Sure. Mm -hmm. What you are confusing in your mind is the difference between freedom of religion and treason, right? So if tomorrow America said that whoever follows Daesh's version of Islam, which I don't agree with, right? I don't agree with what they say, but okay. if a government says that if you follow that, we consider that treason and you will be arrested and put in jail or possibly put to death and so on, that has happened and could happen, and we wouldn't say that you don't have the freedom of religion, right? Even today, if somebody like David Wood stands up in the Abu Park and takes the Daesh flag and starts, says that my religious beliefs are that Daesh is correct, you would be arrested. Would you say we don't have freedom of religion in America? Um, I would say it's clearly not universal freedom of religion. Okay, well, I think you're, you need to have a talk with <laughs> you know, some kind of lawyers here because people consider that not to be the, uh, uh, an, an impediment of freedom of religion, but rather something against the state. I would just say okay, that so if you're let, if you're if you're raised as something and you conclude that it's false and you want to and you want to share your ahead. new religion, okay. that seems like that would be free. So, that would be like the bare bones of so freedom of religion. It, so if it, you it don't have again, that, it would again depend on the situation, the place, the Islamic judge mm -hmm. that would take it to court, that would have that discussion, and if it is seen as irtad, then that hukum is there. This is what we mean. I hope we're clear with it, inshallah. We are clear. Right, I think this needs to be clarified. I think it is clear. I think your mind had some misconceptions, but go ahead. Yeah. Let, let me put it this way. Every person walking down here who reads that, if they believe it, they would they would assume that you're free to leave Islam. I think you're making an assumption. I don't think I am. You are. Have you talked to everybody? Um, we could ask like 50 people who walk by, hey, right. what do you think this means? I'll tell you what. Why don't you get to your other yeah, point yeah, first? Got, just got two more here. Go ahead. Okay, so point three. So this is misconception number yes. three. Islam permits terrorism. And the verse that's used, I'll go ahead and read the line before it, says the Quran clearly demonstrates the seriousness of killing an innocent person and emphasizes the value of human life. Good. Yeah. Surah 5, verse 32. 
if anyone murders, a, if anyone murders an innocent person, it will be as if he has murdered the whole of humanity. And if anyone saves a person, it will be as if he has saved the whole of humanity. Excellent. And there's quotation marks. There's no dot, dot, dots there. Do you believe that is an one, two questions? Do you believe that is an accurate quotation of that verse? Okay. And two, do you believe that the meaning is represented correctly here? as far as the context of the passage in the Quran. Because you got the story of Cain and Abel right afterwards, and then you got yeah, yeah. sort of lessons drawn okay. right after sure. that. So, uh, I didn't make this flyer. Okay. I just want you to be clear. I don't know which translation or how they're, they're using. None. But, I'm sorry, what? This can't possibly be a translation. Uh, it's gotta be some translation. I mean, I, it's not in Arabic, right? <laughs> they left so many things out of that okay. verse. That that, but, but again, you, they could call it a paraphrase or something right, like that. So that's you, not verse. You, you know, and I know, there are also paraphrased Bibles. I have one at home that paraphrases meanings and they're, they're, okay. they're the verses throughout the Bible. You know that, right? Yeah. So if they're using something like that, that's up to them. But what about this ayah? What, what problem do you have? Does the Quran not forbid killing people here? Uh, not not in a way that would okay. that so, would condemn terrorism. So, so let's let's look at a Arabic. Surah 5, right? This is thematic translation. What's that mean? It takes themes by paragraph. Okay. So look it up. 532. Mm -hmm. Okay. So read it. Okay. So 5, Surah 5, verse 32. That is why we ordained for the children of Israel that whoever takes a life. Sure. So that's the first part that they cut out, that this was a... Uh, Children of Israel. Well, that's Actually, not cut out. That, I mean, again, so some verses are like half a page uh -huh. to quote a part of that verse. How long it doesn't change away from the meaning? Whatever was ordained. Let me well, it's actually a quotation from the Talmud here, not the, not the Torah. Oh, no, 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 you poor guy, you don't understand. <laughs> this is a, <laughs> this is a quotation from Mishnah Sanhedrin chapter 4. Okay, so let okay. me explain this to you. This is not Mishnah Sanhedrin or the Talmud. Okay? This is the Quran. Yeah, no. Okay? This is not from the Talmud. This is the words of Allah revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So your belief? Oh, well, you're talking to a Muslim, so yes, my belief, bro. But is this in your hand, the Talmud or the Quran? Yeah, but it's it says revealed to the children of Israel. Sure. So it's a, a revelation that the children sure. of Israel have. So and they have that. It's in it's in the, the Talmud. I got you. But this is not from the Talmud. This is from the Quran. This is chapter Al Maida that is in the Quran. Okay. Okay. Now, those things that Allah reveals to us about what was revealed to the people of Bin Israel is mm -hmm. in the Quran as a benefit for us as well. Those things we take rulings from, depending on whether they were specific for them or not. And this is one of the verses where Allah has revealed a guidance for us in the Quran. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So now, if I was to use like uh, Ayatul Kursi or one of those very long ayat, and I use a part of the ayat that is relevant to the subject, this is not cutting or, or leaving out. Do you you do normally you, you normally indicate when you're when you're cutting into a verse and cutting out. You know what I mean? Okay. You so, put dot dot dot, so, then part so, of it. So this is then, again this is again your whoop. misconception. Let me just explain this okay. to you now because see, I have to educate you about so many things so you can understand. When the Quran was revealed, there are ayat that have wukuf. You know what a wax is? You probably don't. So now <laughs> you have where a, a, a subject matter begins and ends. Okay. Sometimes you have multiple of those in one verse. Are you understanding me? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have a verse that the next verse completes the meaning. Okay? Okay. Wailul lil musalleen, the ayah where it says the ones who pray are cursed. You have to look at the next verse. Yalihum an salatihim sahun. They are upon their uh, prayer. Uh, and they're, they're, they're lazy, they're, they're, they're not careful about their salah, salah mm -hmm. right? So now, if you don't understand the second verse, you don't understand the first. But on the other hand, there are verses that are almost half a page that have many different contexts within it. So if you take from the meaning that is complete, nothing wrong with that. Are you educated now on that? Mm, no. no. Not, like not a bit, because okay. they, keep, they keep taking yeah. stuff out of the middle as well. That's what right. I just said. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So, so read, I mean, read that. If you're so, going to do that, you can make any verse say anything you want. No, you can't. Because of course you can. Wukuf. You can. I can, I can take yeah, a verse we, and we, chop a bunch of parts out of it. You didn't understand what I said. See, this is what a problem. You know what a waqf is? 
You don't. So that's no. what I'm trying to explain to you. Okay. You cannot just take things out. You have to look at where you can stop okay. and where the subject matter completes. Have you ever get a? Well, you, no, no, this is like, like your, your ignorance is, is the problem. This here is look, this. You see what this is? This letter here. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that is? No. Go ahead. This is called a gene. Okay. Right. Why is it there? This is so that it's jais to stop there. You know what that means? So you're saying there's there's these stops all yes. through the middle of this verse. Yeah, not just this verse throughout. No, the but this this verse. Okay, so let's look at because the, the verse doesn't make any sense without the, the context because it says that is what when it says that is why we are okay. doing for the children of Israel. So it's talking about what the, the story okay. about uh, the the bird showing uh, Cain how to how to bury his brother. Sure, right? But the, but the fact that Allah forbid killing man and and put the sin of killing yeah yeah that, person, that that's that's let fine. Let it's let the finish. exceptions here. Finish. Go ahead. Let me finish. That there is not related just in that context. Mm -hmm. That hukum that if you kill one person, it's like killing all of mankind unjustly, mm -hmm. is going to be applicable till the day of judgment. By the way, do you know where that do you know where that came from in the Talmud? I'm not saying I this came from the Talmud. Okay. I'm it's interesting because it's actually a commentary on the story of Cain and Abel. Okay. It wasn't supposed to be revelation. In it the was, Talmud you're talking about. In the Talmud. It was a commentary on the story of Cain and Abel. Okay. And the reason the rabbi said this was he said that when God says your brother's blood cries out to me for the ground, from okay. the ground, blood there is plural. So it's your okay. brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. And so the rabbi who's commenting on it, he says this is how God is telling us that it's not just the person you kill, it's all future generations of that person. It's all of his blood. It's not his blood, it's all of the, the bloods of his future descendants. So it's actually a commentary from from a rabbi in the Talmud that ends up in the Quran. But all of that is not the point here, right? So okay. you're saying... So you're, again... No, 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 that, no let, 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 me, let me just read, okay. read the verse. We'll talk <laughs> about the parts ahead, that are cut ahead. out. Go ahead. I understand that you don't always need to quote an entire verse. Right? Okay, good. So but, at least you're clear there. Yeah. When it says, so that is why we ordained for the children of Israel, that part gets cut off and starts here, right? But then, notice, whoever takes a life, and then we have, unless as a punishment for murder or mischief in the land, that part gets cut out, it will be as if they killed all of humanity. And whoever saves a life, it will be as if they saved all of humanity. Okay. So it's kind of problem one, is this verse is allowing killing people for certain crimes, okay. namely murder, or for spreading mischief in the land. So notice, okay. they cut all sure. of that out. They, they, they didn't. But let me explain it to you, because you apparently uh, don't understand how translations are done. So I will, I will explain it to you, okay? okay. So, what does it say here? Min ajal dhalik, kathabna ala bani Israel. So we ordained on bani Israel, innahu. Now, you see the uh, wow here? So anyway, uh, Just tell me what the reason is for cutting it out. Sure, sure, I'll explain it to you. Man qatala nafsan bi ghayri nafsin aw fasad fil ard. Whoever kills somebody that is not in is not in response to either them having killed somebody or spreading mischief on earth, right? Okay. So what does it say here? If anybody murders what? An innocent person. An innocent You're saying person. It's a paraphrasing. Yes. The not yes, yes, yes. Okay. And, and, and innocent here shows that this is not general. That if it's for a crime, mm -hmm. then that would not be included here. Okay. Now you're clear? Yeah. So there is no cutting. It is understanding with the word innocent here, representing that meaning. And now, now, let me finish. Okay. So, like I said, there are, when you translate from one, and that's why we always keep the Quran in Arabic, to know the original text, to always look at the original verbiage, right? When you translate, everything has to give the meaning, right? So, whoever translated that saw that the word innocent would then take away those that were guilty of murder or causing terrorism or whatever else, mm -hmm. fitna in the land. So they translated it with the word innocent there. Okay? And as I said, I don't know which translation they're using, but they did not cut anything out. That's the way they understood the verse and translated it. Now, if you don't like that translation, that's perfectly fine. You can email them and say, hey, I prefer the translation, not a problem. Well, but, but, but don't say they cut anything out because they didn't. 
That's the way they. So translate. they translated with this long exception clause as just innocent. Yeah. Okay. That, that is an exception. I would right? consider. I would say you need to put something in there to indicate that you're putting it out. Otherwise, people so, think they're so you're me, getting a direct let me, quotation. Let me, let me explain this. To you. Well, I haven't even gotten the point yet. Hold on, bro. Okay. The, about the innocent part. <laughs> I thought this was the point, but okay. So when you have translations, mm -hmm. we have like Mahsin Khan, who is a very literal, exact translation. For each word, he puts like three, four letters in, right? Then you have Sahih International, you have Dr. Mustafa Khattab, you have others mm -hmm. who took to be more the meaning of the verse yeah. because we always remember if you want to get the original as it was revealed, we have it in Arabic. Unlike the Bible, which the earliest manuscripts are in Koine Greek, not in Aramaic, we have the original Arabic. So if you want to go back and research the meaning and the depth and the exact wording, you have it. But if you want to look at it in English, we always say this is the meaning of the translations mm -hmm. to give you the gist of the Quran. Okay, so if you prefer a different translation, I would, you know, I, I, again, I didn't publish this. Again, that's, but that's, feel free to uh, message the one who published it. And that say, is hey. not the, the the point. Is when you take it in these two verses together yeah. in context, and how <laughs> people understood them. You, you're I'm assuming getting a very people understood it. I know because you have a bias in your mind in understanding. Unfortunately. Right? We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. okay. Go ahead. So you have verse 32. Okay. And then we have verse 33. Okay. Right? And again, this is quoted to show that Islam doesn't allow terrorism. Sure. It says, indeed, in, your, in the translation you guys are handing out, indeed, the penalty for those who wage war against God and his messenger yep. and spread mischief in the land yep. is death, crucifixion, cutting off their hands and feet on opposite sides, or Excellent. exile from the land. Yes. This penalty is a disgrace for them in this world, and they will suffer a tremendous punishment in the hereafter. Excellent. As for those who repent before you seize them, then uh, know that God is all forgiving, most merciful. All right. Good. So the very next verse talks about killing people for certain yes. certain for penalties. What? Certain penalties. For what? There is making war. There's the crime of making war against, against God and, uh -huh. his messenger. and his messenger. And for the vague crime of spreading mischief Did you in say the land. The vague crime? I say vague crime. But you just added that into the verse. No, I said Does no. I'm, say, I'm saying it's a vague crime. So you're, you're looking at the verse and David, adding your own word. David Wood, David Wood, <laughs> David Wood okay, is saying go. it's a vague crime. Uh, I say because, that because, because there, David, Iran, Iran just executed, let me, let me, just executed uh, a man, you, and the David crime Wood was this for ending your your anyway, whatever you want to say. So let me just explain it. You're saying it's vague because you're ignorant, and I don't mean that as an insult. I mean that as a, a advice mm -hmm. because you don't understand tafsir or what fasad fil ard means. But the pro let me finish. I know, the, I know the historical background. If you're going to talk it? about, what is it? Is that the one where the guys came and they converted to Islam? And that is that isn't. I have read that in the commentary. Which and, commentary did you read? Um, <laughs> you're saying that's not the background. The guys who came me, from Yuko and Muhammad told them to drink some stuff, and then they killed a guy, and then and then they had to be slaughtered. And their eyes hadith. were burned out with nails. That's one hadith about okay. a people who tricked the Qurra and took them and massacred them and murdered them. But fasad bin ard has been explained by Ibn Abbas, by the companions, by the Prophet One of the things is banditry and rape. Do you, are you paying attention or are you... I, I, I agree. Doing some, okay, good. So, so it's not vague at all because if you looked at the tafsir of it, the explanation of it, which David Wood didn't take the time to do, that's why he thinks it's vague, then you would have known that there are particular crimes that, that bring these punishments. Mm -hmm. And they are not regular crimes. They are when you, for example, rape and pillage and massacre people, then no doubt that you are no longer an innocent person. That's not terrorism. If we say, for example, if you kill somebody in Texas, you'll be put to death for killing somebody. We don't say the state of Texas is a terrorist state. That is a punishment for a crime. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I, so, I, I, so, so it's not vague, you I just don't know the context of it. <laughs> All right, so this is the commentary of Ibn Kathir here. Okay, excellent. So Allah said next, The recompense of those who wage war against Allah and His Messenger and do mischief in the land is only that they shall be killed or crucified or their hands and their feet should be cut off on opposite sides or be exiled from the land. Okay. And then we have the commentary. Wage war mentioned here means oppose and contradict and it includes disbelief, blocking roads, spreading fear in the fairways, and so on. Now, so, so you have Ibn Kathir. So, so you, 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 you pause there, right? So well, he's, he's, he's right, listing right, the things. Right, You're right. opposing and contradicting Islam. But, but that's not all, right? Keep going. 
Right, it's not, you have, if I say that here are 10 crimes and you can be uh, sentenced to death for them, you don't this have is, to commit all 10. This is again your misunderstanding here because you don't understand how tafsir is done, right? When you do tafsir, you explain the crime and then you give other aspects that are related to it, right? In Arabic, that's why if you get the Arabic, there'll be a wow. You know what a wow is? Yeah. 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 So there is wow and at, right? So regularly, for example, if somebody disbelieves, are they to be killed? No. So that is not that is not the ayah. This is not even about murtad. This is not even the hukum for murtad. This is not a apostate ayah. You know uh, that, right? Yeah, you got. Uh, you, I'm see. saying you uh, got yeah, some, yeah, you, you're yeah. you're correcting some people because Ali okay. Dawa, when he was threatening the apostate prophet, okay, he uh, used this ayah. He used he used spreading corruption in the land. He, he used says this by, ayah. He did he's, not. He used yeah, yeah. spreading corruption you're in the words land. Words in Ali Dawa's mouth. Ali right? Dawa said. Okay, look, look, said people. Ali, no, 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 no. Let me let me clarify yeah. what I'm saying. He said I don't know where he's getting it if he's not getting Is it. Is he from your here. sheikh? No, I'm pointing out. <laughs> I'm pointing out that there are people calling for people's okay, death. Okay, so okay, if they're okay. misinterpreting something, they're misinterpreting it in the same way I'm misinterpreting it, Excellent. and they would need to be corrected Excellent. much more than you would need to correct me. Excellent. So the the idea here is Ali Dawa says uh, that you know people like you who leave your religion and then spread it, causing corruption in the land, the the. Islamic death penalty would be applied to you. Sure. So he says that. So he's including that in but there. But he didn't use this ayah. He said corruption in land. Yeah, whatever, see, see, whatever, whatever you want to say. So me, what verse is he getting let me, it from? Let me clarify this okay. to you. Okay? Because see, I don't know what Ali Dawa said. You're bringing this here. I'd have to watch his video and speak to him. Mm -hmm. right? But this ayah was, I guarantee you, was not the ayah he referenced. Spreading corruption, fasad al ard has many forms, many ayat, many ahadith. Which one did he use in the context? We can't discuss because I haven't heard it. But you, David Wood, are misunderstanding the ayah because this punishment is not for the murtad only. This has to do with banditry, as you were reading and then you stopped, right? Um, and this is why this particular punishment of being crucified and so on is not the one for murtad. You know that, right? Um, I'm saying you got some not, No, right? because I, okay. so, I believe that corruption in the land as many different you forms. spread corruption like because notice it gives a bunch of different penalties as well right, right. so i'm interpreting that as there are all sorts of different crimes you can commit right. and there are going to be different penalties and how would they, you they, know they, for they all they all they would all sure. i think anything and how would you know for which crime would you give what punishment you'd go to the you go to the sources excellent what sources would you go to you go to the quran hadith and so on excellent what hadith did you read about this ayah um none i'm reading the commentaries this is a Ibn Kathir. it's not a hadith word, right okay. it's a tafsir the, the, what Hadith, like read, read from your English summarized translation here. The only one, what, I, the what only one I've read was the people, the people who come from okay. Yukul or some, so, I think so some said Uranus. When they so came, what did they do? No, this is this is where the disagreement is arising. It right. seems you, you're interpreting it as if a verse is revealed in the context of there, yes. that's the only situation I it could apply in. No, I did not. Whereas I'm reading it as corruption in the land, you can pack all kinds of stuff in there. Again, right. Iran just executed right. Again. Uh, a, a journalist, and the, 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 penalty, the crime was mischief in the land. I believe it's on the books in Pakistan, as far as uh, I think mischief I think in the so. land is in Pakistan, definitely in Iran, okay, so, as far so, as crimes. So the problem you're having is you're packing a lot of things into a word you don't understand either. Right? So when you're talking about Iran, Iran does many things that are not Islamic. Mm -hmm. That's not an example for us, and you continue to okay, say that. Okay, if you're saying they're wrong, that's, that's fine. Yeah, they're wrong. <laughs> okay, that's easy. I'm not convinced yeah. they're wrong. That's why, that's why I'm bringing it so up. You think muta is okay, like temporary marriages and all that stuff they do? No, I don't think it's okay. Oh, okay. I'm, so saying I, I'm saying <laughs> I, don't disagree, I don't disagree with their, interp their interpretation. Did, did they the, use this the verse, verse particularly? Or are, are you putting that are saying in there? We're, we're sentencing you to death for corruption in the right, land. This is the only verse I'm aware of. Where oh, would, but but then, then you're ignorant. Because there are many other ayat about fasad al ard and there are many ahadith about it, and there are many different forms of it, each one having different penalties. And when you wanted to understand that, you get the tafsir called Tabari, for example. Tabari actually lists out the ahadith on this issue. When I tell you that you do need to look at the context of the ayah, this is should be very easy for you to understand that when a certain verse is revealed to look at the context is important but also the ahadith that explain what type of facade will have what punishment mm -hmm. that's why we have books on Qudush mm -hmm. that explain that if for example you're causing corruption by playing music in the street nobody's saying that you should be killed and crucified and cut mm -hmm. even though that can be technically considered facade you're you're throwing rave parties or whatever right mm -hmm. but if you take your 
I'm not going to say ignorant. What's a polite word? I don't want to be rude to you. Uh, uninformed way of understanding. Fear and so on. Well, but, but you don't understand he it. Said, he says wage war means right, right. oppose and contradict. Right. And you can, in other words, it can be all kinds of things. Right. But what are those things? Opposing so, and contradicting. So re read the rest of Femini Kathir. Why'd you stop? <laughs> he gives a long read list it, of these read things. It, read it. He says, you, you it means, it up, he says it. waging war means opposing and contradicting. <laughs> but what does that mean, opposing if and contradicting? If I'm opposing and contradicting Allah in a Muslim land with a caliph, so that wouldn't fall you, into that? Not necessarily, right? So it depends on what you're doing and how you're carrying it out. For example, when certain caliphs made certain rulings and people disagreed, even amongst the Sahaba, mm -hmm. right? They were companions. I'll give you an example. Uthman ibn Affan, are you paying attention or you're zoomed out? Okay, good. Uthman ibn Affan was a Khalifa, right? Yep. He was in Mina and he made four units of the prayer instead of two as a travel. Okay? okay. Ibn Mas'ud, he told him, O Mir al Mu'mineen, you should make two because you're a travel. Uthman, he, now he's, he's opposing what the Caliph did. Mm -hmm. Uthman had his own deduction, he felt he was a resident, so he did. Now here, does that mean, because he's opposed the Caliph, does that mean that, that people are going to say you should cut him off and kill him? No. This is where you don't understand what Fasad al ard means, right? Fasad has many different forms. Some of them, you can have a disagreement with the Khalifa, not a problem. As long as you keep it respectful, you're not calling for killings and revolutions and things like that. No problem with that. And you see some of the companions, when Marwan was the Khalifa, I'm trying to help you so you understand the difference between different types of fasad. When Marwan was the Khalifa, some companion, when he gave khutbah, they got up in the khutbah while he's giving the sermon. And when he raised his hand, they said, May Allah destroy your two hands. Right? Why did you do this? It's a bid'ah. Right? Another companion, he, he held him when he wanted to give the sermon before the prayer in Eid. But, but that doesn't mean that they're killed. Okay? But if you're calling for revolution, you're calling for killing, you're calling for assassination, this is the kind of facade you're doing. You're, you're taking people as a hadith that you quoted and apparently don't understand, that you, you come, you're not Muslim, it's not about Islam and your murtad. You take a people and say they're going to come teach Quran and then you massacre a people for no reason. You murder and massacre people. Then this facade will bring this kind of punishment. Not all facade. Are we clear? Uh, yeah, but we have that, 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 okay, that's good. not the disagreement. Okay, well, I'm glad at least that cleared up. Yeah, so I think, let me try and clarify the issue this here. Is, this is Dave schooling 101 today. Let me, let me uh, try to clarify the issue here. All right. When you're going to call for the death of people, seems okay. like you should be pretty precise we are. In, in, what, in what's Very. going on, right? Yeah, but then in the Quran, Allah's eternal speech, and he brags throughout the Quran about how clear his speech is. It is. His speech is very clear. And the speech is that you can kill, crucify, chop body parts off of, or exile people for the crime of corruption in the land. Um, and then there's opposing and contradicting, which is how you would declare war on Allah. You're not, I mean, it's not like you're going up and fighting Allah, right? They're not They're opposing or contradicting. It, Let me explain it to you. Right. Go ahead. I'll let you finish. So, If that's what you're saying, right, and you, you lay this, and this is Allah's eternal clear speech, and I say, look, it says you can, in the very next verse, after the verse you quote to show that Islam doesn't allow terrorism, which is true, it says there's all these people that you can kill for sure. spreading corruption in the earth. Yes. Then what does that entail? Excellent. And your response is, well, you have to go to this, you have to go to that, you have to yes. look into this. Yes. And just, just, just imagine a, a parallel situation, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine that Joe Biden comes out tomorrow mm -hmm. and he says um we have to we have it's to not terrorism we have to what does terrorism mean who's a terrorist let's say let's say he ah, says something anybody like, who you think the terrorist can be killed that, that you, you know what you're saying no i mean bro, the, notice on. notice we, we, we have an idea of what terrorism is what's the idea if he says who's the if he says no, we're wait, going wait 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 you, you have an idea with a terrorist it is tomorrow uh a right-wing extremist who calls for killing muslims the terrorist uh, yeah. You think they should be all arrested if they call for killing Muslims? Yes. Put in jail? Yes. All right. Okay. Be careful, you may get yourself arrested, bro. Take it I easy. Right. Killing I know, I know. Yeah. I'm just saying, okay? So, so now, are there people that would disagree with you that that's terrorism? Yeah, I mean, terrorism usually has are, a definition. Are there, it's, are there either, people, it's either committing violence are, are there or people, threatening violence okay. for the purpose of uh, spreading or enforcing an ideology on, on others. So, if somebody says, that um, Black Lives Matter is a terrorist organization. Like some of your counterparts on, I don't know which side of the aisle you're on, 
and the Republicans have, have said, right? So would you consider that terrorism? Um, see, see, you're not clear. No, I'm saying, <laughs> I, I wouldn't say the organization. I would say if an individual uh, goes and kills someone or something like that, or, or threatens an ideology, it. that's a terrorist. Or threatens it. That's true of Republicans, that's true of Demo okay. Democrats. So, yeah. so you the say the I'm going to go murder call for killing of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, Hillary Clinton. That's a terrorist that can be arrested for for lock her up or something like that, right? If, you, if you say lock her up or something like that, if you say, if you say, that's and it depends, if you say she's committed a crime, she okay. should be locked up. So, if you say we need to kill her okay. because we disagree with her political views or something okay. like that, that would be, I would consider that terrorist. Okay. Yeah. So, are there people that would disagree with you? Yeah, sure. Sure. So then it's not explicitly clear. Then there have to be laws explaining what is meant by terrorism. Because your David Wood's mm -hmm. interpretation may not be David Duke's. That may not be, uh, what's that, uh, Farrakhan, and what's the other guy, Jackson? Uh, what's, the, what's the dude, man? Uh, Jackson, the guy who, Al, Sh Al Sharpton, okay. what's the other guy? Uh, Jesse Jackson, right? Okay. Their interpretation of terrorism and David Duke's and yours are going to yeah. be different. Okay. So when we as a country say, hey, we need to condemn terrorism and terrorists need to be arrested, mm -hmm. who is and who isn't a terrorist is not going to be clear from that. Okay. So when Allah says that fasad fil ard, then this is explicit, it's clear. But when you want not to... Not clear enough, let me, let me because there are people where... Let me, let me explain it to you. Where okay. you, you you're speaking just like those so-called Quranians, just because they're ignorant, doesn't mean that the ayah is not clear. Okay? Uh -huh. So when Allah says, Aqimu salah, establish the prayer, that's an explicit verse, no doubt to his clarity. But how will you implement that? Will you pray four ayah, two, four rak'ah, two rak'ah, fatiha, no fatiha? This will all come in the hadith. That's why Allah says, Atiullah wa rasulahu. Mm -hmm. Do you understand or no? When Allah is explicit in the Quran, it's clear, it doesn't mean that every single thing that has to do with science or rulings or prayer or what invalidates wudu is all going to be an explicit ayah. When Allah says, Atiullah wa Rasuluh, right? Obey Allah and His Messenger. So that ayah then makes explicit that to implement this verse, you're going to look at the Sunnah. Okay? Just because you are ignorant of what the hadith are on this issue and how to implement it doesn't mean the verse is unclear, but the Quran should be studied. So if you, David Wood, want to understand the Quran, I'm offering you, sit down with me. I will bring you the original books of tafsir, not just what you Google online, which is a summarized English translation. Actually, Ibn Kathir, Tabari, Qurtabi, and we'll look at what actual evidences from hadith are about this particular verse in which situation is it applicable and then you will be clear your mind will be set free with knowledge instead of ignorance uh, i'm not sure because the, uh, the come prompt, on, man. The you know you know in your heart you're my, like i should study this before i talk about it i should look no, into I, this I, before I, I literally came here because i, I looked at the verse yeah. the verse didn't why, line up the verse didn't why, line up with what i well, right. what it said because i look at the commentary know, of you don't fear it says opposing right. contradict and so on first thing you didn't read the whole commentary secondly when i'm saying the hadith mm -hmm. The actual narrations about this verse, if you look at those, then you will know when it's applicable and when it's not. What is meant by fasad fil ard, just like when we say terrorism, what is meant by terrorism, then there are laws and there are clarifications, patriot acts and all this stuff that's, that's then said, yes, the president Bush said, we're going to we have a war on terrorism. Well, what's terrorism? Is the Israeli government a terrorist organization? If, you, if the definition you gave earlier, that you use violence for a political goal, then David Wood is saying the Israeli government is a terrorist organization because they use violence for a political goal. Everybody, David Wood is saying from his definition, the Israeli government is a terrorist organization. <laughs> now, you're going to try to backtrack from that because you don't want those dollars that are coming in from the Zionists, right? <laughs> I'm not aware of any Zionist dollars. Oh, come on. <laughs> no. You may not be aware Christians, of it. Christians, right. Christians, 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 love you. Christians, uh, Christians love you. Just to be clear, just to be clear uh, the normal definition of terrorism is not government. So government sponsored terrorism is not considered I terrorism. I believe I would have to consider this. <laughs> no, <laughs> look, look at the explicit clearness of terrorism now. So Hamas is a government, they're not terrorists. What about the Saudi government when they do stuff, people call them terrorists? Keep in mind, I'm not saying I would say, I'm saying you but, have to but, judge it but, act by but, act. But, but you, you, you see, exactly, exactly. Yes, Earlier listen, you said you're, you're that the ayah is not explicit. Because when point. I said, no, 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 no. When I you're said totally you have to judge point. it act by act, you were like, well, that's not clear. But now you're, when you are getting in the same situation, you're telling me you have to judge it act by act. Then that speech from no, Biden that you gave the example is, is not clear. 
Oh, not what I'm saying. Not, none of that is what I'm saying, right? Yes, if you're, if you're looking at a particular act, you say, okay, we have to classify act by act by act and so on. When I'm saying that you give a, right. when you give a blanket statement. Yes, right? like terrorism. No, guys. When you give a blanket statement, right? Like if, if Joe Biden were to come out tomorrow and say, we yes. must condemn let's, terrorism. Let, let's suppose there's a terrorist attack tomorrow, right? Yes. And he says, we must kill those who believe in Allah. And let's suppose someone comes, everyone would, would go nuts and say, what are you talking about? What are you right. talking about? And suppose right. he says, well, it's clear from other things I've said in the past and other situations sure. that I'm talking about those who commit terrorism. I think the, the, the response would rightly be, hey, if you say we're going to kill people, do horrible things to them, exile them, whatever. Ban them from the country. We need some, we, you, you need to be clear about that and not give this sort of general thing. Right. So terrorism is already okay. pretty clear co it's not. compared to corruption. Because you in the land. just said we have to go act by act. So it's not clear. You're talking about the act, but, I'm talking about the command. Okay. So the when ruling. President Trump said we want to put a Muslim ban, was that terrorism? Um, is it violence? I mean, it's banning exile. You just said exile, right? So if you ban a people from a country, no, it's I didn't, exile call, I didn't right? call that terrorism. I said, if, said I said if, I said if you are. Okay. If you're giving a rule, so when and it's a blanket statement, you Donald need to be clear. Trump if said, he had said, if he had said, we want, we're going to ban Muslims from the country. If he, he means something more specific, then he needs to be more clear. Thank if he you. Means I'm gonna, if, if he means thank I'm going, you. To, I'm going to ban <laughs> terrorists, then so he needs to be more clear. So when he said the command should be made okay. clear, so when he should he, not say the blanket excellent. statement. He so, should say we're going to ban those who do this and this and this. Excellent. And here's how these so things are So when Donald defined. Trump said we want a Muslim ban. I, he, for, for the record, I opposed that. You opposed that? I opposed that. Oh, I, I got in trouble for that. You got in trouble? I got in trouble really? with some of my fans for that. Really? Yeah. Right. So, Listen, I, mean, but, I mean, think about it. Some of my best, I mean, some of my best friends over the years have been Muslims. So, really? Yeah. Some of your best friends? Some, some of my best friends. Wow. Yeah. Am I in that group? <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Not, right. yeah, right. not yet. All right. <laughs> Tell you. Okay. So, when Donald Trump said we need to ban Muslims, mm -hmm. would that include every Muslim? Did he mean particular countries? Did he mean particular types of Muslims? Right? It, it wasn't explicit, right? If he says we're going to ban, I would say he, you he need did. to be very, very clear. Thank you. Yes. So when he was asked, then he came forward and said, well, there are particular countries that have terrorism and so on and so on and so on, mm -hmm. right? But that was taken explicit. When President Bush said, we're declaring war on terrorism, at that time, we invaded Iraq. Well, Iraq at that time had not attacked us, right? Right? Saddam Hussein had nothing to do with 9-11 or any of that. But we use that context to consider them terrorists. Yeah. Right? When there was a war in Russia, in Afghanistan against the Russians, mm -hmm. you remember? Yeah. Those same freedom fighters that came to America, sat with Bush, shook hands, got Stinger missiles and millions of dollars, were freedom fighters. Those same peoples, when they fought the U.S., were terrorists. So when you say terrorism, your definition changes per situation. Fasad fil art is a general term, right? Now, what particular, like you said earlier, it goes case by case. There are hadith that mention which type of fasad has what type of hukam, what type of ruling. If you want to implement this ayat, you want to understand them, you have to study them. Just because you didn't put the time and effort to study the verse doesn't mean it's not clear. This is the difference, and I'm going to make this a very clear point for everybody. This is the the difference people think because they're ignorant of the ayah that it's not clear. The ayah is clear, but you haven't put the time to understand it. When the Quran is clear, it doesn't mean that any five-year-old kid or any big white dude is going to come and pick it up and he's going to understand everything about the Quran. No, we study the Quran for years and years and years. Why? Because it is clear, but you have to learn the knowledge. And that's why we go to scholars and sources. So if you want to understand the ayah, then go seek knowledge, look at the hadith on the subject, it will be crystal clear. But if you haven't put that time in, then you will not understand the ayah, not because the ayah is not clear, but you're ignorant. Everything you're saying right now is what I regard as the problem. It's, hey, I'm issuing a command to do violence to people. 
And if you want to understand what I say, you got to spend a, you got to do a lot of research. You can't just go to Ibn Kathir and start reading because oh, you're going to see some problems there, and you're going to say, whoa, this is actually worse than I thought. Okay. You can't just read the verse. You have to do all this, all this research, right? This you do. Like, this would be Why like is me. that a problem? This would. But because you have to learn. Who told you? No. To if I'm going, if, no, no, if, no, if all these hurt. people are here listening to me, and I say we're going to kill these people. And I don't clarify, and I say, but if you're if you're not clear on what I mean, come, you know, you can talk, you can read my previous writings, and look into these things. Excellent. You would not accept that. You would. wouldn't. You would let not. Me, you would me, not accept me, a president of the United States saying, sure. "Fight those there who be believe in Allah." No, I'm saying. So you, 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 you take <laughs> right, right. So right? Right? you're so, saying you're so saying here, you're with that. Right? So here, I, I, let me, we're let on the me, same let page. Me, let me, let me but why do we why do we demand this level of clarity from a political leader? We but have we, more clarity from Allah. Let me have explain that to you. Let me explain that to you. Okay? When Joe Biden or uh, President Bush or Trump or any of them would say, we're at war with terrorists. Mm -hmm. Right? Now here, like I already explained to you, who is a terrorist depends on your definition. Russia will take people to be terrorists that you would consider heroes. And you would take people to be terrorists that they would consider heroes. So for us to ask, like, hey, who is a terrorist? Is our governments included or not? Do you think it should be more clear? Sure. Okay. But, that's but, all. But, that's but, all but, I'm but, saying. But, I'm saying I'm if once, you, once you're involving slaughtering it. people, let me, be let me, be clear let me and don't require tons of research. Let me finish. Because Allah could say it, right? He let could me, say exactly what He means in let the me, verse. Let me explain it to you. Allah could say, establish the prayer: Dhuhr will be four, Asr will be four, Maghrib will be three, Isha will be four, Fajr will be two, two Sunan before that, four Sunan before Dhuhr, four after Dhuhr, four. Allah could say it, but then where is the majaz? Where is the beauty of the Quran? The Quran gives the hukam, the ruling. Now, if you, as David would say, can I pick up the Quran and read any verse and implement it any way I see fit? I would say no. The Quran is greater than the Constitution. How many clarifications do we write to the Constitution? It's deeper than that. It has. It has things about the past, the future, science. It has things about rulings between husbands and wives and government. So all of that does require scholars. And that is why Allah says in the Quran, if you don't know, then what? As those who know. No, no, bro. Just because you don't know, doesn't mean that I have, I'm not going to school you today. No. Go and ask the people of knowledge. What does that mean? What does it mean? David Wood, what does it mean? Silence. You're the <laughs> if I'm the sheikh, then listen to me. Why are you, why are you telling me? All right, listen. Because you, so, again, so you, would, you, Quran, would, you would never accept this from anyone else. Right? I, so, so, again, so we, we, we take again, the, we take I, the I just told you people for spreading corruption. I, I, I land, just told you. Fight those who do not believe in Allah. Uh, I've been commanded to fight people until they say there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. That's in the Quran? No, that's that's the hadith, but okay, that's, that's you, know, that, you know that's authentic. I'm, I'm, of talk, course, I'm, talking, about the, I'm talking about these general, these general sure. claims. If the Constitution of the United States was filled with all these claims about killing people who believe that, killing people so, who so, think so, that, so killing me, people who leave this religion let me, or something like that. Let me give like you that. an example. Okay. And, but, and the response was, sure. well, you can go back through history yes. and figure out yes. these other okay. situations. So you would not accept that. You would never accept I, I, that. Let me show you how you accept it. Not just me. Okay. The Constitution says in the Second Amendment, you have the right to bear arms. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Can David Wood walk around with a rocket launcher here? No. Why not? Be. Why not? Why can David Wood not walk around with a rocket launcher when the Constitution tells you you have the David Wood's against the gun rights? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just messing. I'm just messing. You're good. You're good. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so do you see what I mean? You no. have the right to bear arms. What does that mean? I understand. No, no, no. no. Answer my question, David. Please. Yes, I understand. So I understand that, that all of this. You're, you're is not answering my question. Why you're, you're, can you're, David you're, Wood? You're, 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 I'm not, you're not on I'm the not, same track. I'm yet. on the same track. I'm saying I'm when saying, you call, yes. hey, I'm not okay. saying you can't have a law and then clarify. Thank right? you. There are piles you. and piles of volumes <laughs> Thank that you. lawyers have to learn. Thank you. I'm and saying, as ulama have to learn. Scholars have to learn because the Quran is deeper than the Constitution. So of course you need scholars. That's what the Quran tells you. If you don't know, David, if you're ignorant, yes, go and ask the people of knowledge. And That's the, what the Quran is explaining to you. So for you not wait, to wait, wait, follow the scholars? Quran, a good question. I got you, bro. You 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 think you think you got this? I'm saying because if I, you know, what does the Quran say? If I were, say? To, if I were I to go to Abu Bakr al Baghdadi, that would be you. a different story, right? I got you. Who accredited Abu Bakr Baghdadi to issue a fatwa? Who, 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 who accredits who? anyone? Oh, you don't so know. Some Muslims are going to. Other, no, no, 
no, no, no. Muslim scholars mm -hmm. have ijazat. Okay. And asanid, I have them. Okay. If you want, I can show them to you, right? Okay. Where the scholars Do of Islam. Do you have differences of opinion? In ijazat? In the differences in the different schools no, 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 no. and so on. Listen, listen. You listen, have differences listen, of opinion, listen, right? Listen, hold so, on. Hold on. No, See, you're, you're, because you're trying to jump the subject. Let me just explain who can give fatwa first. Okay. Right? Because you're trying to jump right now. Let me explain. No, you're not on the right problem. Okay. So let me just clarify. I let you speak. You let me speak. When we talk about the Constitution, the right to bear arms, there are people that I know personally, including some relatives here, that believe you should be able to own any kind of weapon. And you should be able to walk around because this is a well-functioning militia should have any... If the government has certain weapons like rocket launchers, David Wood should be able to have it. And if the government can have military walking around with it, David Wood should be able to. There are people who believe that, right? David Wood disagreed with that right now on tape, right? Mm -hmm. So obviously the second commandment is not that clear. There's disagreement. So what happens sure. now? You have laws, you have courts, you have the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. you have different law bodies that look at the Constitution, look at the context of what the forefathers meant, and then they give their legal opinions. You cannot say the Constitution is useless because what does bare arms mean? No, just because you don't know the context doesn't mean it's useless. So the Quran is that deep that you, Wh which the Quran itself the tells you, I'm Wh sorry, I'm, I'm, spe I'm speaking right now. I think they both did. I, think they both I don't did. know what you just said, but whatever. So, when the Quran gives you such deep knowledge that it's not for kids to just pick up and read with an ABC. It doesn't, it's outside right? the Quran. Listen, go bro, elsewhere. listen, listen. When the Quran gives you that deep knowledge, then it tells you with it that look, if you're ignorant, if you don't know, Probably. go and ask Ahlul Dhikr. What type of scholars you ask, right? Now I'm answering that. The Quran tells you, Ahlul Dhikr. What Dhikr? <laughs> I, I just told you I haven't studied Islam since All right, so, so, so come and study then. Okay. Why don't you learn I'm before I'm you make I'm objections? Now, but I'm no, no, it's a instead of objecting and coming and arguing, study. Learn. Ahlul dhikr are the scholars that know the Quran mm -hmm. and Hadith because that's called dhikr, right? Of remembrance. So those scholars that give you evidences. Mm -hmm. Now, when you want to give your opinion about a verse, mm -hmm. if you want to make tafsir of that verse, it's not as easy as just picking up a nikatir. This is like saying, I'm going to pick up some medical book and do operations on you. Nobody would allow that. You're like, why is science so complicated? Because it's deep. <laughs> right? So as that, the Quran is deeper than that. So you go to the scholars who have been given ijazat and asanib. If you don't know what that is, I'm going to tell you. In ijazah is when you study with me, and Allah make you Muslim and you can become my student, you can study with me. And then I teach you and then I say, you know what, now David Wood, now that all that garbage is taken out and you're clear and you've actually learned and you know what these terms mean and you know the verses mean, I'm going to write you an accreditation and I'm going to give you a sanad, a chain of narrators all the way back to either the author of the book or to the Prophet وسلم, or in the case of the Quran to Allah. Now I accredit you. Abu Bakr Baghdad, Usama bin Laden, these people are political figures. You should know better than to think that they can give fatawa. It should be people of knowledge like Sheikh Ibn Al-Taymin and those scholars that studied knowledge, that have those ijazat, that then go and give fatawa. So when you don't understand a verse, if it's not clear to you, it's not because the ayah is not clear, it's because you're ignorant. You go to the people of knowledge who can give you evidences, get the answer, and they will tell you, dear brother David, this ayah is not about any facade. Because of this hadith, this ayah is about this type of facade. And then it would be clear for you. Just a quick question. So if it's clear, that means people shouldn't be disagreeing. On it, right? No. Muslims or no? no let okay. Me explain, let me explain okay. That to you. Go ahead. And you brought up disagreements. I gotta get going in a few minutes. So. Uh, no, oh, we gotta zoom. Through. I gotta get through one one track. I mean, can we? Can we? Can we? Can we? Can we? Uh, can I, can can we answer uh, it's okay. No, it's, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, sorry you, you brought up the same question, so let me explain it. It's okay. Sorry. Good. Take care. Yeah, yeah. Question. Relax. Okay. Actually, so when you have disagreements, it doesn't mean that something isn't explicit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, no, no Muslim disagrees on the basis of Islam. There is one Allah, there is one Prophet, five prayers, we all agree on that, right? But then what you have, like for example the Shia, where there are some political issues that cause them to go off track, and there are Mu'tazila and there are Jahmiya and those guys that had disagreements in Aqidah, but at the base, Muslim Aqidah, the Muslims are united, we believe in what Allah has revealed, the Prophet Now when it comes down to ruling, particular rulings, sometimes there's disagreement because scholars try their best to understand the source. But if you want to know the correct opinion and you look at the evidences, it always becomes explicitly clear. So there's a, there's always one correct that's going to be the correct interpretation yes. of a verse, always? Always. And all Muslims agree on this? 
that there is one correct, correct interpretation yes, of every verse. But somebody could be mistaken in it. But then it shows, well, what's the difference then between something being clear? Um, how do you determine if something's clear? Let me explain this. Go okay. ahead. What was your name? John? John, yeah. John. Mm -hmm. If I tell you we're at Balboa Park, I'm pretty explicit with this, right? Yeah. Am I clear or not, right? Now, it depends people, on what you mean by clear. That's what I mean. I don't know how you're defining clear. If you say you're at Balboa Park, you we're at Balboa Park. Correct. Is that clear or not? It's clear to me when you say the words, but that's okay. not clear what the words mean, because you could be saying <laughs> no, no, it's not funny, because you could be saying that there could be multiple parks. You could be saying whatever. You could be saying all kinds of different things. So what I'm trying to understand is what your definition of clear is. Excellent. So this is the problem: is that you have a perception of clarity that may not be what's I don't know, regularly accepted. If I tell I'm you, just asking your perception of clarity. I, yeah. I gave you, if I tell you we're at Balboa Park, I'm pretty clear, right? Now, these people standing here, somebody could be like, I think this is uh, not Balboa Park, this is North Park, right? They could have that opinion, but we could go back and check a map and see which park we're at and come to the right conclusion. Just because one person didn't understand something doesn't mean that I wasn't explicitly clear. Uh, are, so are so clear, clear okay, so, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> yeah, no, so clear Thank then, you. but so that's what, so clear you're saying is independent of how un, other people understand it, correct? Sure. So yes, something's clear, clear only, so if I say, so if yes. I say blah, 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 and I say, hey, that's clear. clear. Why is that not clear though? Because I have no idea what you said. Yeah, so, but if I don't understand <laughs> what you're saying and I have different interpretations and it's still not clear. No, it is, because when you said blah, 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 yeah. nobody understood that. Did anybody, did I, but but if it's subjective, then I would only have to understand Again. it for it to be clear. No, so that's why that, I say, that, is that it clear? Make... Okay, let me let me put it this way. Is it sorry? And I'm just trying to rush quick because I know you got to get out of here. Is it clear when somebody is talking, the person who gives the word, are they is the clarity on their behalf or is it on the listener's behalf? It is clear to the person who said it, and the people who want to get to the truth can understand it. But if somebody is mistaken. Okay. Like when you said blah, 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 yeah. nobody here, even if we want to understand you, took any meaning from that. But when I said we're at Balboa Park, all of you that want to know can find it. Even if somebody is misunderstanding what I'm saying, it doesn't mean the message isn't clear. Then there should be no okay. difference uh, in opinion. Wanna, so, yeah, yeah, but that's okay. Yeah, but then my go, point with that is there should be so difference in I opinion. I think I get the last point, so at least we, we kind of went go through the issues on, on one track. So uh, let me just sort of sum up my view on if I were reading this, okay. if I were a Muslim and I was reading this. Okay. With a teacher. No, if I were just reading this. Okay, well, there's right? a problem right there. You should. If yeah, yeah Muslim, but if I were reading this, you should have a teacher, right? That's fine, but I mean, okay. if this is Allah's eternal speech, and I read it. Uh, and it again, sounds, this, this, this is, no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. Let, let me let me just point. make this clear before you make yeah. your point, because you, this is this is going in a loop because you're not understanding what I'm saying. I'm understanding. You, I'm disagreeing. Okay, so let me let me explain my point, and then you can disagree all okay. day and all night. When you say Allah's eternal speech is clear. Nobody says that means that you are just going to pick up the Quran and make your own ideas and implement them. It means that Allah made clear his ahkam and he sent the Prophet to show us how to implement them and he chose from the people of knowledge and then he instructed you that when something isn't clear to you, it's not because the ayah is not clear, it's because you're ignorant. Go and ask Ahlul Dhikr, the people of knowledge, mm -hmm. so then it can become clear. So as a Muslim, you should then ask somebody who has studied the Sharia, who is qualified by scholars to be giving fatawa and tafsir and hadith, say, hey, is this hadith sahih? Is this hukum implemented like this or not? Just because you didn't understand it without going to the people of knowledge, doesn't mean it's not clear. All right, go ahead. Now, so if I were reading this, if I were reading this, Surah 532, Surah 533, and I read penalty for those who make war or spread corruption in the land Excellent. is this, and it's yes. all these penalties. Yes. And this is this is said to um, said to rule out terrorism. I would be reading that, and if you if you look at what terrorists say, they usually don't think they're they're killing innocent people. If you look at the Al Qaeda reader, the Al Qaeda reader, and so sure. on. Their reasoning was. Uh, look at what places like the United States are doing. Look at what Israel is doing. Look at what these various people are doing. Sure. And so they're not innocent, right? They're not innocent. Their sure. their militaries, their governments are committing crimes. As far as killing ordinary citizens, ordinary Israelis, ordinary uh, 
Americans and so on. Sure. It's these are the people who vote these people into power. These are the people who pay taxes to these governments to do these things, and therefore they're not innocent. I don't see anything in here that would contradict that. So, so that that's one thing. Now, now I understand you're, you you're, you're saying you're saying I would go to a scholar, and I would ask the scholar for clarification. Sure. That's a good segue into this. This this ties together, and then and then you can respond. On, 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 the, on, the, on the last one, no, it's, it's because this is what we were go just ahead. talking about. So misconception number eleven is Islam forces people to become Muslim, right? And the verse that is said to refute that is Surah 2, verse 256. Let there be no compulsion in religion. Truth has been made clear from error. So this tract is saying that shows that you can't uh, force, force people to become Muslim. Okay. okay. Okay, so suppose I read that and I'm confused. I'm confused because this verse says, you know, you kill these people. This says, fight those people, fight those who do not believe in Allah. That's not fight about forcing not people to become Muslim. Well, <laughs> why no, are you confused? No, no, no. Look, All right, go ahead. when Muhammad says, I've been commanded to fight people until they say there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Sure. That sounds like I'm going to fight you that's until you believe what I'm telling you to believe. Sounds like that. That's not, you... that's not, if you want to say that's not forcing, that's me like me saying, I'm going to stab you until you agree with me, but you're free to believe whatever you want, right? Because so, you don't understand. I haven't gotten to the point. I haven't gotten to the point. Got point. <laughs> so, the point is, suppose I read something like that. Hey, this sounds like I'm supposed to go out and fight people right. until they agree with me. This verse says no compulsion in religion. Good. You're saying go to a, go to a scholar. That's what the Quran is telling you. Yeah, I'm supposed to go to a scholar. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. So I go to a scholar. So this is not a scholar. You know that, right? Ibn Kathir? This is a book. <laughs> so let me let me let yeah. me explain. Okay, to you. yes, yes, yes. No, 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 he talks about the historical background in Surah 2, 256, no compulsion sure. in religion. Right? And so we go down and it says, at the conclusion of, of all that, no, you're says, skipping through the whole explanation. Though, right? Yeah, he gets the explanation. Right? Okay. So he gives the historical background. But then he says, but this verse is abrogated by the verse of fighting. You shall be called to fight against the people given to great warfare. Then you shall fight them or they shall surrender. Allah also says, O Prophet, Strive hard against the disbelievers and the hypocrites and be harsh against them. Sure. And he says, Oh, you who believe, fight those of the disbelievers who are close to you and let them find harshness in you and know that Allah is with those who are the pirate, who are the pious. Therefore, all people of the world should be called to Islam. If any one of them refuses to do so or refuses to pay the jizya, they should be fought till they are killed. Okay. So that's what I see when I look at Ibn Kathir. Okay. And then I just have one more. I just want to. This, this, <laughs> you're, not you, you're making like ten I'm points. Trying to, I'm trying to get the whole point. This know, is but, all but one. This, this is all not one point. Work when you don't listen. Bro. This is all. This is all one point. This is right. making the exact same point. So suppose I don't like Ibn Kathir. Yeah. And I want to go. about who you like. This, this is where you're I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. So it's, you know, I ask Muslims, hey, who are you? You even you you know you you said, hey, you should read Tabari. You should read this. Yeah. So I go to Qurtubi. Okay. And court to be right after quoting this verse says, scholars disagree and hold various positions regarding the legal status and meaning of this ayat. Okay, there you go. It is said that it is abrogated because the Prophet, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, forced the Arabs to adopt the deen of Islam and fought them and was only pleased with Islam for them. Suleiman ibn Musa took this view saying it is abrogated by old prophet do jihad against the unbelievers yeah, and the hypocrites there, sure. that is related from yeah, ibn masood and many commentators and then it goes on we don't need to read much more but then the next interpret the next interpretation is it is not abrogated and was sent down about the people of the book in particular and means that they are not forced to adopt islam when they pay jizya those who are forced are the idolaters, which you okay. said isn't the case earlier. So here, 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 here here's, let me, let me here, explain it. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm done, I'm, I'm okay, done, I just want to summarize. Yeah, right, I, I, mean, I'm, I mean, I may disagree with what you're about to say, you, you but know, I'm saying. Um, so, we've got these verses that are about fighting and killing. Sure. And we've got verses that yes, are like no right, compulsion in religion. Uh, or to yes, you be your religion, to me be my religion, right? We've got verses like that. 
And if I'm confused, I'm supposed to go to a scholar. Yes. But these show that scholars have disagreed over the centuries. They have, so, right? So me, they have. So some are saying, hey, the actual conclusion, once you read the entire case, the conclusion, the, the takeaway message is you're supposed to fight people until they believe in Allah. And the earlier, the, the other things that said something else, no compulsion in religion, those have been abrogated. And so you, the point is you've got, you've got a, you're handing out a material which someone would read and they would say, hey, I'm not finish them. Yeah. you would say, oh, Islam forces people to become Muslim. That's a misconception because the Quran says, let there be no compulsion in religion. And what I'm saying is, scholars down through history have held interpretations that certainly don't line up with that interpretation. So you're acting like, hey, if you're a scholar, you're going to come to the, you're going to come to the conclusion you that you're coming with. No, no. You're saying, you're giving a, a representation of scholars, and if you're a scholar, you're going to come to the same conclusions, and you're going to say, this is actually peaceful, this is actually what this verse means. And when we look, we see they come to wildly different, wildly different um, conclusions, and some of the conclusions that they're drawing is, are things like, therefore, all people of the world should be should be uh, invited to Islam. If they don't come, they should be fought till they are killed if they don't pay the jizya. The point here is, this business of when Allah is not clear in his Quran about commands to kill and slaughter people, subjugate people, and so on, when he's not clear, yes, if you're not clear, that allows someone to step in and say, of course, this is actually peaceful and you need to interpret it peacefully. But it's also wide open for someone to say, actually, this is abrogated and we're commanded to do this. The point is, it looks like a giant mess. And the real issue that I'm concerned with here is that you're handing this out and acting like this is a straightforward condemnation yeah, of to uh, forcing yeah, people to become Muslim. Muslim. This is the verse that refutes it. This is the verse that refutes that. And I open, up, clean, uh, I open up your commentaries, and the first thing I see is things that contradict what you're saying. And you're saying, go to a scholar. Are you done? I'm listening to you. Are you done? Go ahead. Are you done? It depends on what you say. As no, long no, no, as you no. agree with me, then I'm done. <laughs> well, then you're not done, because I'm not going to agree with you. But are you done saying what you had to say so you can listen now? I made my point. Okay, thank you. That means you're done with what you're saying, and you're going to listen now, right? I'm going to listen. You're listening. Okay, excellent. First thing is, when I told you that you need to go to a scholar, you misunderstood that to go to pick up the seed of Nikatir. He is somebody who passed away uh, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. You are just picking up an English translation of a summary and un thinking you understand what you really don't. Because if Nikathir gives you different opinions, like Qurtabi that you quoted yourself, gives you opinions to understand that there were differences of opinions about whether this was Nasif or Mansur. When I say you need to go to a scholar, I mean somebody who's alive. Okay? Somebody you can go to and say, hey, I want to understand this ayah because these are not just these are a few books. You have Tabari, you have Kathir, you have the Maqshari, you have Qurtabi, you have all these classic tafasir, you have Suyuti. We look at those, then we look at evidence. Okay? How did when the Prophet ﷺ took over Mecca? You know Fath al Mecca, right? You know Fath al Mecca? The victory when Mecca was here, right? Without fighting, right? Did he go and say, everybody who's a polytheist, forget about Ahlul Kitab, will be put to death? No, he didn't. He did not. not so what? In Fath al Mecca? Did he do that or no? No, not there. Okay. No, it was certain so, people. Certain people. Those that committed even, war crimes. Yeah. Even those that committed war crimes. Like you can listen, listen to my lecture and I go through each one that was killed and why he was killed and what war crimes. I mean, there were singing girls who made fun of him. That was a war crime? Are, are you talking him? about Fath al Mecca or are you talking about other incidents? I'm saying when okay. he took Mecca, he said okay. there are certain people, even if, so, they're, even so if they're clinging me, to the curtains of the Kaaba, you got to kill them. Let me, Some let of those me, were just singing girls, no, slave girls who were singing. Those were people, and I've gone through each one of them, mm -hmm. that wasn't just the fact that we're singing, it's the crimes they had committed, mutilation of bodies, including by women, of prisoners of war, just because you're The ignorant. girls did it? Some of the girls did do it, yes. The girls who were, who were condemned? Some of them. Why does it just say who wrote satirical songs uh, about it? Because you don't know the depth of the knowledge. It because would kind of seem important right. to listen. It, it that's would, like me, that's would, like would, me right. saying, Charles so, Manson needs to go to jail because right. he jaywalked, right? Right. right. But, but that's because you don't know who Charles Manson was and what he did. So if you want to know why he went to jail, read his court papers. So, if you want to know about the ahadith, about who did what and why, there are hadith on it. Just because you didn't read them doesn't mean they don't exist. Okay? So, what you should do is go to a person of knowledge and say, hey, why was this person put to death and why was this person not? 
Why was Abu Sufyan and Hinda and those not? Why were others who stayed polytheists in Mecca were not put to death, right? So when you look at those contexts and how the Prophet did it, then we look at the different scholarly opinions. We weigh them with evidences and we come to the right conclusion. We cannot put that kind of a debate in a flyer. Neither do you, right? Let me give you an example. This is from the Bible, right? You have here a verse in Exodus 21, 20, 21. Exodus 21, 20, 21. And if a man beats his male or female servant with a rod so that he dies under his hand, he shall surely be punished. Notwithstanding, if he remains alive a day or two, he shall not be punished for he is his property. Now, if I don't look at context, if I don't ask David Wood or anybody, and I just take this and say, the Bible is clear, I'm going to get a slave, and I'm going to beat him to death, and if he stays alive, I can't be arrested. And now you are going to come and say, no, 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 that's not the context, this is the old, this is this. But then you're contradicting your own point. You're telling me to go get context for ayat from the Bible when you won't do the same for the Quran. This is, nope. your, this is your double standard, Absolutely this is your not. problem. This is where you are not being fair in this conversation because you know this Bible is filled with verses about killing homosexuals, about things that people have used to carry out hate crimes, to carry out genocides, and you know that's true. And you will say, oh, we condemn that because what they should have done is understood the context of those verses from the Bible. And when we say the same thing about the Quran, then you don't accept it. Thank no, you no, for your trip. No, just, no, you said you were done. No, I said, I, if, done. I said if I agreed with Thank you. Thank you. Just my no, time to go. Hey, let, 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 let me, while you're wrapping up, let Have me. Have a good day. Let, hey, good hey shake. Oh, Come back another day. Do you day. want me to just say it to the camera here? If you want to, it's up to you. I, I gave you time to finish. I finished. How about we my do, time how about to we do go? Quick come short one as we're as we're you walking. Come back, as we're walking. You come back. And no, no, I'm not going to do this you short back and forth. Come back. No, no, no. Sit no, no. and I, discuss. I just, I just mean. Thank you. Final thought. No, no, no. All right. I know that. So the point that he wouldn't listen to was there is no Christian on the planet who would say, if you read something in the Bible and you're concerned about interpreting it correctly, there is no Christian on the planet who would say, don't read what scholars say. true. Said. Yeah. Show me one, show me one Christian back, on the back, planet who would say, back, back, okay, go, 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 go. No, 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 come back another day. You know the <laughs> oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll, and continue, I'll continue talking. You, you can, talk you can listen you to me. If you, want, if you want to jump in, you can jump in. your audience knows that you've been informed, You're breaking down so you can hear what I'm saying. So. I have never heard of a Christian who would say, if you want to understand this verse, don't read about it. Don't go to the classical uh, Bible scholars. Don't look at what Bible scholars have said. You can only go to a person who has this kind of um, credentials and so on. Never heard anyone say that. So to consider that a parallel, if you're bothered by that verse, the first thing you would do is look up a commentary. You get a study Bible, you get a commentary uh, by like Paul Copan or something like that on things that are regarded as um, moral problems in the Bible and so on. No one would say you have to spend years researching at the feet of a scholar to understand what's being said there or to understand it. I can't think of anything in the Bible. Obviously, if you're getting into theology, it helps to do a ton of research and to study. But if it's straightforward commands, the commands that are directed towards us are pretty clear. Uh, love your neighbors yourself. Love your enemies. Uh, honor all people. These are pretty straightforward. You get something confusing, you open up a book. Um, the problem and the only reason I can even imagine for saying don't go to the books, don't go to Ibn Kathir, don't go to court to be don't go to the earlier scholars that they're quoting the only reason i can say for saying that is that those scholars are just not going to line up with what muslims are saying today right if you go through court to be and you read um there's no compulsion in religion there's no one on that list who thinks it means what muslims today say that it means and so you obviously don't want to go there you want to go to you know a, a modern scholar preferably in america or something like that who's going to tell you no it means exactly what it says and so this is this is really the disagreement how clear do we need to be on commands to kill and slaughter if the quran is so horribly unclear that you have all these commands that convince some of their all-time greatest scholars that this is a command to violently subjugate the entire world and it's not 
it seems like Allah would have to be the absolute worst communicator in history. That's all I can. That's all I can conclude. I just want to say I appreciate that. Uh, you know, the Sheikh puts himself out there like that. Um, again, I haven't been studying Islam in a while. That's why I'm trying to get back into it. But my goodness, this is not a solution. The miracle of reinterpretation is, is just not a solution to the problems there. And if you have all of these tracts that you're handing out, these tracts that you're distributing, and the first thing that happens as soon as you look any of them up in any commentary is it gives the exact opposite interpretation that's being put forward, I'd say you got a problem. I'd say you got a problem.